Hello everyone, my name is Naveen and welcome to the series of introductory videos on ServiceNow from Edureka. In this video, we are going to cover basics of ServiceNow in the perspective of ServiceNow as a ticketing tool or an help desk platform. Now, before we start, I want to start by saying that ServiceNow is not anymore used as a tool or a mere tool, but it's rather an enhanced, a full-fledged application platform that actually started its journey being a simple ticketing tool. Now, when we say ticketing, the usage of this word ticketing tool is something of the past. And henceforth, when I start this, I would not be referring to the word ticketing anymore in this, but I would be rather using the more appropriate term, which is incident management in this case, as incidents are what technically it means when you use the word ticket. So rather than using the word ticket, we would from now onward use the word incidents as incident is something that technically takes care of the process and the function of help desk as a first year for customer support. Now, if you go into the agenda of service now and incident management, let's go through what we are going to go through in this detailed video. So as always, we're going to talk about ServiceNow and the platform, which we have already discussed about, but touch upon what ServiceNow is, what IT service management or ITSM is, and how incident management comes into the picture of ITSM and the ITIL process. What are the major steps in incident management? The various participants or the roles in an incident management process, after which we would be going through the out-of-the-box incident management application in ServiceNow, which will help us to understand in a general sense through a demo how a incident would be going through various steps so as to reach its finish. So let's get started. As we all know, ServiceNow is a platform which has supported IT service management for many years and has built its horizon into many other processes. And in the context of this video, we would be going into detail of the business process, namely the incident management. And ServiceNow was founded by Fred Luddy. In fact, one of the interesting facts about ServiceNow is that once at first this platform was built by Fred Luddy, the simple use case he had used in ServiceNow to showcase the power of the platform was something that looked like the incident management application because incident management is something that requires a workflow or a process in order to move from one stage to another stage and take it to the end or the finish. So there are many other systems like ServiceNow which are currently available in the market. One of them being Remedy, BMC Remedy, it's also one of the biggest competitors of ServiceNow. So that being said about ServiceNow, we are just going to touch about, again, something that we talked about, that is ServiceNow as a pass and what really differentiates ServiceNow from other platforms. So the pass offering of ServiceNow has, as part of their cloud platform, various aspects such as analytics, the incredible user experience and the developer platform, which makes it a pass very easy to deliver any kind of functionality or customization across to the customer. And this is all on top built with the mindset of security first. So as you can see, security is something that is taught in the initial stages of building the platform itself, not something that was taken care of as a later add on. So in simple sense, ServiceNow is a cloud platform and it resides on the internet and not on your local computer. Now, how does ServiceNow fit into the IT service management world? IT service management is a set of activity or process that an organization follows as part of their operations. Now, some of the processes that you would get aware of now and in subsequent part of learning service now are processes named as incident management, problem management, change management, and release management. Now, what are these processes for? As we know from the word service management, it's all about managing the services. So to manage the services as part of the operations, there are certain processes that touch upon ensuring the smooth operations of the services. Now, when I say service, it could as well be simple as ensuring that the, the very laptop that the customer is using is being supported 
through a particular process which helps him to troubleshoot or have a smooth usage. So let me just take you through on a high level of how all the pieces of different process and IT service management come into picture. And after that, we will deep dive into incident management as the process. So if you can imagine a particular organization where in somebody who is working on your laptop is facing an issue. Now, what would be the first process of going ahead and resolving such a issue? Now, the person in context who is facing the issue would be calling up the help desk and would be telling about the very issue that he is facing. It might be as simple as not being able to start the computer or probably once you open up, the operating system has a particular issue. Now, all these kind of issues can have two ways of getting it resolved. One is by ensuring that the desktop gets functional at the very easiest way by doing a temporary workaround, which although may not fix the issue for a long term, that might be something that would help the customer resolve the issue and get started with his work. Now, there might be another kind of way that you can solve it. That would be more of a root cause fix. That is by finding the real reason why this happened, having an investigation and a deep dive into it, and then fixing the root cause issue of it. And that's where the problem management comes into picture. Now, problem management as a case would have the root cause which requires to be fixed, having a lot of different changes that needs to be done on the system that is currently running live. Like for example, let's imagine an IRCTC application or a railway ticketing application. A railway ticketing application has an issue that a customer reports to the customer support. Now the customer support would be getting the issue reported by the customer and the customer support would log the incident as so and so. It could be the fact, let's say for an example, the user in context is not able to key in the dates of his travel, which is a big issue. Now, the investigation team would look into it and understand there is a small fix that they can do while on the run. And for the longer run, they would need to do another fix, which would fix this problem once and for all. So that is where you can understand the immediate fix that the user is given is something that happens through incident management. And the root cause fix is something that happens to the problem management. And in simpler terms, change management and release management are processes that comes along with problem management. Normally in the best practice world, these are processes that are again best practices. There is no one single way of doing these processes, but there is always a better practice of following a simpler process and activities followed for this particular module. So in simple terms, incident management is defined as an event or any kind of interruption which is unplanned and uh, that necessarily involves in the reduction of the quality of a service being delivered or in some way being deteriorated in terms of the quality. So incident management is the processes that comes and handles any kind of incident. So its basic and primary motive is to restore the normal service operation as soon as possible with the workaround. So if you're looking in the world of incident management, you would be hearing the word workaround most often. The reason being workaround is something that is done as a temporary fix and that will help in quickly restoring the services to its full or in its capacity that the user can go ahead and do what he was stuck at. So it basically minimizes the adverse effects on the business. Going forward, we would now understand incident management as a process in detail, wherein we would know what are the various steps involved in incident management. Incident management as a process, if we are breaking it down, has very number of steps which will help to understand how an incident comes and, and what part of the process does what particular activity so that it comes to an end. As we all understand, ServiceNow is mostly a workflow-based platform and incident management is one of the primary use cases that ServiceNow as a platform started with and was able to showcase a, a very effective usage of the platform. So let's try understanding incident management. And this incident management is something that is generically followed as a best practice methodology. This is not something that every organization would handle or be used in the consistent fashion. It can be tweaked 
in according to an organizational need but an organization would have an incident management process in place which would mostly follow a similar strategy that is a best practice which is provided by the ITIL process so the first part of incident management is as you can see is detect and record which we already talked about that is a user faces a particular issue and it is being recorded so the detect and record would be the part of the process wherein a particular customer calling up the customer support saying he or she has a particular issue an example of an issue could be as simple as maybe the browser not connecting to the internet or it could be something like the desktop node opening up or in many advanced cases there could be network issues inside organization which would be reported against the appropriate team so that is the first part of the process this process detect and rec incident management would have the part of detect and record which would necessarily take care of detecting which is done by the customer or it could as well be an automated detection of a particular issue and that being recorded into the application namely incident management application once the particular issue has been detected and recorded the next step is to classify and prioritize now what does classify and prioritize mean in general classify means to more of categorize the kind of incident that or the issue that comes into the picture now when particular customer talks about a particular issue it would be related to a particular entity it could be the hardware system it could be the software part and if you drill down more into those aspects you can classify them more appropriately so that it can very well be taken um, to the right team across who would be handling it so in simple cases if you're talking about somebody saying there is a problem with Microsoft Office now when you classify such an issue you would see the top tier of the classification shown as software and in the second tier there could be if in simple terms you can talk about you can see Microsoft Office but there could be even more better prioritization done so that it actually gets handled better in bigger organizations so there could be even a second tier of classification called productivity because Microsoft Office and many such tools could be something that comes under the hub of productivity so there could be different ways an organization can decide to classify a product so that could be one part that incident management would take care of in the part of classification now it depends upon the urgency and the impact of an issue that the incident gets prioritized on the basis of now in a huge organization there could be issues that can vary from very urgent to not so urgent issues now it is very important for incident management process to prioritize in such a way that the organizational needs are taken care of up to the maximum so that the operations do not feel the challenge of difficult issues being taken care of at a later part rather than being taken care of at the initial stage so prioritization helps in ensuring the issues are prioritized in the right way and for that we would be going through in detail about something called the priority metrics which is going to come subsequently in this video but to say in simple terms prioritization is what helps the incident management take appropriate actions at the right time now comes the next step in incident management which is to investigate and diagnose so from the very words incident management as a process itself is self-evident as in the investigation part is to have the team who is looking into the issue investigating and understanding what is the issue and diagnosing the particular part of the issue so to diagnose so the part where the issue is being recorded should have enough details so that the team who is working or investigating on the issue has necessary details so from this itself you can understand the detect and record part and the classify would really play an important role in investigation because investigation really relies upon the information that is being created or recorded or stored so that the team in context can investigate it once it is investigated and diagnosed it is the next step of the team who's handling the issue to resolve and restore the service 
Now, the term resolution, as I mentioned before, in incident management is not necessarily something that is done as a root cause fix. It can be even a quick temporary workaround or a fix done so that the user in context can go ahead and do whatever the activity is that is hindering him in going forward in helping the business or the organization. So you need to understand resolution and restoration is the part wherein there is a quick fix or a step done by the investigating team to ensure the user in context can go ahead with his business as usual or BAU. So once the resolution is provided by the team who's handling the issue, the incident closure is a part which can even be reviewed by the customer in context. In many cases, what happens is although the issue is being resolved, customer would have some more clarifications or sometimes even not enough resolution being given for him to be able to go forward. So this is where the customer acknowledgement comes into picture. So incident closure is something that would wait until the customer acknowledges. In most cases, this particular part of the process is mostly automated. And that means when the ticket status moves to something called as resolved, the system waits for a period of five to six days. And if it doesn't see any response or any update from anybody on that, it would be automatically moved to closure. So now that we understand on a high level the various steps in incident management, let's see a particular way in which are the steps involved in step of incident management. The various steps in incident management involves, as I said, the detection and recording of the incident. Service request is that part of a process which helps in ensuring there is a smooth request system that will help the user procure or fulfill a particular activity or a thing. It could be as simple as a new employee joining a company and the various initial aspects that the user will have to take care of. Now that we have understood on a high level what are the different steps in incident management, Let's go in a bit more detail of what happens on every different step involved in this process. So the initial step as we understood is nothing but detection or registering the particular issue in hand in the terms of an incident. So the incident that comes into the picture can as well be logged by a person at the customer support end who would be listening to the user who is having the issue in context. So the help desk person would listen to the user and log the incident according to the details being mentioned by the user. It can very well be communicated across an email and there are email inbound systems, which is a particular functionality involved in service now that helps in converting an email and its details to an incident or it could be as simple as a particular user opening up the service now interface and logging the ticket so once the particular incident is identified and registered we would go into the next step which is nothing but to classify or prioritize the incident. The classification of incident can be in terms of the hardware or the software or the underlying small piece of network that is also necessarily nothing but a hardware. Now, the way the organization decides to categorize or classify a particular incident is totally on the sole discretion of the organization. These are all various simple best practices that is being recommended across and every organization would fine tune it to their according needs and build it in such a way that the process becomes smoother and all the parties involved in the process finds it easy to use. So categorizing or classifying the incident is one part of the second step. And another major part of this step is what we call the priority. Now we discussed about something called the impact and urgency, which decides upon the priority. We would be learning in detail on how a priority metrics is built. Now the priority can be something called a critical high, medium or low, depending upon the impact and urgency. So priority metrics basically is something that is driven by the impact and urgency. 
a priority metrics is dependent on the values that are provided by the user or the customer support end on understanding what is the impact of the issue and what is the urgency of the issue when we say impact impact involves necessarily the amount of users being affected it could be one particular issue or it could be one particular user in a context that is having an impact in that case the impact is not much high because it's just particular user and it doesn't mean that it doesn't have to be taken care of but when there are incidents which are of large number of users being affected the impact of that particular issue becomes higher the urgency depends upon how much business critical that particular issue has led to means so how much urgent the incident requires to be resolved depends upon how much of business impact the particular issue has now it's the combination of both these things that decides the priority you can see here that a priority metrics is something that depends upon impact as we mentioned about impact is nothing but the number of users being affected and the number of affected services and its reputation urgency is the extent to which the incident resolution can bear delay that means how much of impact it has on the business so now that we understand about urgency and impact we can understand that it's a combination of urgency and impact that the priority is which helps the service desk to address the incident how much of a quick they can it is to identify the required times of actions sometimes that needs to be taken as well so a priority metrics is something that would look something that we show here this is something that can be improvised for the company's own needs right now there are only three different levels being mentioned here depending on the organization you can have any number of impacts and urgency being measured and this is something that you can directly see on the service now when we go through as a demo so in the demo we would be seeing various values of impact and urgency that comes out of the box and we would be able to see how the priority is basically being driven so priority is basically a combination of impact and urgency that we already talked about so you can see here that when the urgency is p1 or critical and the impact is high the priority is p1 so the p represents the priority the subsequent part represents the urgency so critical means urgency and high means the impact so if the impact is high the urgency is critical then the priority is p1 that is of priority one or the rank of priority is one now when the urgency is normal which is important and the impact is high it would take lesser precedence when it comes to an critical urgency so you can see here there are four different levels of priority p1 p2 p3 and p4 now the important urgency and of medium impact has a priority of p2 now this is something that you can see on the service now tool as well being followed which we would go through when we go in the demo side the next step as we understood and we already discussed about is investigate and diagnose so in the part of diagnosis of a particular incident it can very well be escalated across to multiple organizations within the organization so it means basically inside a company there could be multiple different lines of businesses working across and it could depend on the working of multiple lines of businesses together to ensure the investigation or the diagnosis is done in the right way so in investigation diagnosis basically there is the first level of diagnosis which is done at the level of the tier one or the tier two so the tier one or tier two may not be much necessarily technical people who probably would need more details to resolve a particular incident in that case that is being escalated across to the next tier or the level two which you can see would also be doing the investigation and diagnosis but they are more of subject matter experts and they would be knowing a bit more details on the issue because the the complication of the issue would basically determine the level at which that particular incident could go and finally reach for the resolution or recovery so the investigation and diagnosis 
basically is the part where the team in context who are really looking into the issue would understand the various causes of the issue and basically give a quick recovery which leads to the resolution so investigation and diagnosis in simple terms is nothing but understanding and getting to know the issue recovery and resolution is nothing but getting a quick or a temporary fix or a workaround to get the incident resolved so the closure basically is something that happens as i mentioned it could be as simple as something that an organization that decides the process or the activity should be so incident closure can be something like a particular customer acknowledging the incident that he or she is no more facing the issue or it could be something that is automated that means it is brought to closure after the certain number of days or certain number of time has passed by so now that we have understood about the process let's understand about the key roles or the people involved in incident management the different roles in incident management would start when a customer contacts or the end user contacts the service desk the first line of people who would be opening up the ticket on the basis or the basis of the customer so the roles involved would start with the end user connecting with the first person or the first line of service desk personnel and their responsibility is basically help the customer raise the incident it could as well be instructing the user on how to raise a ticket so that from now onwards they can do it by themselves or it could be something as really trying to understand the issue from the user if it has to do something with a mistake that the user in itself is doing so basically the first line or the initial contacts role is to open the ticket or probably gather some important information from the user that would help resolve the ticket or in the case which is most of the case that the ticket is being escalated to the area which needs to be looked upon which is basically investigating and understanding the issue so the next role would be the assignee assignee is a person to whom the particular issue is being assigned to so you can connect assignee to the assigned to field on the incident management application which we would be seeing very soon now the person who is assigned to his responsibility is basically to work on the incident which is where our investigate and diagnose part comes into picture so to diagnose the incident the person who is involved in the particular group of the entity that is in the entity that is involved in resolving an incident is a group or a set of members who takes care of a particular area in the organization now we can talk about network teams as one of the groups so inside network there could be different specialized people working on different parts of the network so it could be person a who is looking into a certain set of routers when it comes to an issue when it comes to switches or some other type of devices it could be another kind of a person normally it will not be as simple as i put across but that's the general sense of understanding when we say a group a group is something that means specialized on a particular area it could be a group that is specialized on to hardware it could be a group that is specialized on to software or it could be a group that is specialized into some other entity an assignee is nothing but a person who works on the incident and would necessarily do the correct communication across to the user in case if we require more details on the incident and then he would be the person who would finally be involved in resolving the incident once he diagnoses and tests the incident now there is always a manager who would handle the the group of members who are looking into the incidents so the manager's responsibility here is the timely assignment or the acceptance of the way in which the incident has been resolved so the queue manager would basically look into all the incidents that are assigned to the group and how much of workaround and implementation is left on the ones that are yet to be resolved or restored so now that we have understood various roles and the various activities involved in incident management let's deep dive into some of the incident management application functionalities in service now
Now that we have gone through the incident management module and the process behind it, let's go into the incident management application in ServiceNow. Let's run through what comes out of the box along with ServiceNow as an incident management application. So when you type on the left application navigator incident, you can see the module or the application incident and the various modules related to incident listed under them. So let's go through the incident management process that we talked about. Let's see how the process runs inside this out of the box, how it comes. And we will just discuss on a high level what are the possibilities of changes that we can do on incident management application. So in the first step of incident management, we understood that it's about recording or registering the incident. So this is done through the process or the module called create new and in, inside create new in incident. What you can see is when you click on it, you can see the incident number automatically generated and various other information or details which are recorded so as to ensure that appropriate amount of details are being captured. Now the power of the ServiceNow platform is to have quick changes being made onto this module that really suits to the requirement of an organization. ServiceNow has already built a robust incident management process through their incident management application. So let's go through that and understand how we can run that simple best practice model that we discussed about before. So at the time, a particular incident being logged would have a particular user talking about the issue. Now the caller field, which is mandatory being asked about is nothing, but as you can see is a person who reported or is affected by this incident. So here in this case, you would be giving the user's name. Let's, for example, give the name as Apple Tutor. As and when you give this, the platform automatically shows more details about the user here. And all this information that you see here, for example, location and all those kind of things are something that can be leveraged for further enhancing the incident management application to show more details. We will talk about that as a small feature. It's a cool thing that is there in service now. They use the location to actually show where the incident is on the map. So that is something called the critical incidents map. So now that we have given the caller information, we know that the classification of information is something that is very important. So this is the category where that we would be giving in order to classify the incident. As you can see out of the box in service now, it gives us certain values like inquiry or help, software, hardware, network, database, and so on. So let's imagine right now we are racing an issue for a particular piece of software. Now, once you give the software, the subcategory is pretty much driven by the value given on category. This is something that is available out of the box in service now, and you can have this being changed. To know more details on how we can change category, subcategory, and more details, the service now administration course will definitely help you do such customizations. The hardware, as you see, when I give this, will give you different options on subcategory like CPU, disk, keyboard, memory, monitor, and mouse. So let's go ahead with software and in this case, email. Let's assume that we have an issue with email. So this is the configuration item. The configuration item is the item that is really affected. Now, in most cases, a simple user may not be pin able to pinpoint what the real item is. So this is something that when a customer service desk support person is logging would use. So let's assume we have an issue with Outlook. So in our case, I'm going to give Outlook as the software. You can see details of that particular configuration item stored in ServiceNow. Now, ServiceNow, as you saw in the past platform slide, we talked about configuration management or CMDB. Now, CMDB is what holds this information. So we would have a different altogether discussion completely on configuration management on CMDB, which is a whole different aspect in ServiceNow. Short description, let's give a sample short description. As you can see, as and when I type my short description, it gives me a related search result. So these are what we call the knowledge articles. So knowledge articles are knowledge information or articles written probably on the basis of information that already used to happen before. So here in this case, you can see our copyrighted files illegal to have on computer. Now an organization can have their own number of policies and knowledge article created across. 
and that is something that will help in quick resolution of incident so mind you the whole idea behind incident is to give a quick resolution or a quick workaround for the user so service now platform through its functionality has given a very cool feature which is a related search result which dynamically updates on the basis of the short description that you give like for example if you type email the related search results will type and look for keywords through its search engine and provide you articles which more relate to that particular short description or the keyword so let's assume in our case we do not have the knowledge article or enough information to resolve this so my email client is not working is what i'm going to put here and we mentioned about very many other details like how this particular incident was registered Let's assume this was an incident which was registered by Abel Tutor through a phone call to the customer service desk. So the customer service desk person would mention, yeah, he called through the phone. And the state of the incident right now is new because this is the first step of the process. So state is something that drives the flow of the incident management process. You can see here the various three levels of impact and urgency that we talked about in the priority session metrics. So you can see priority five already being showing up. This is something that is done out of the box. So depending upon the value that you give on impact and urgency, the priority value you can see has changed. When I moved from low to medium, it has moved from planning to low. Now, this is something that again, that can be customized according to a customer requirement. And these are some of the fine details of simple customizations that a ServiceNow administrator or a developer would start with to understand. And this and more details of such administrative related or development related concepts would be discussed in our ServiceNow administration course. Now we know right now this is not a mandatory detail and the fields that are required to be made mandatory is something that can also be decided by the organization and its process managers or the process owners. So let's assume we can give um, a particular software assignment group here and you can see as and when I fill assigned to when I click on the lookup list here it would only show me the users or the assignees. So we talked about a role named assignee in the discussion before of incident management roles. So the assigned to value will relate to the assignee role. So you can see, let's assume that Beth Anglin is the person who is going to work on this particular incident. So Beth Anglin is the one who's going to go into the assigned to field. So certain fields and information are something that is generic in service now as a platform capability. So you can see as and when I fill the user and types of field which are contains user, it gives more details about the user. This actually enhances the user experience and usability of ServiceNow. And this is one of the big selling points of ServiceNow, the usability. So there are more details that you can capture as well on incidents. And you can see that subsequently here in the various tabs such as notes, related records, and closure information, which would normally be used while closing the incident. So let's assume we have given enough details about the issue. And mind you, most of the details of the fields are something that can be shown as user friendly in case the user doesn't understand. Let's say, for example, user doesn't understand what the priority is. So it already says that it's a sequence in which an incident or a problem needs to be resolved based on impact or urgency. So all this slight tool tips and help can also be customized and to show the right information for the users. That is also something that comes in the purview of a system administration course. So let's go ahead and submit the incident. So in the first part where we understood about registering the incident, we have the incident being created. Now this view of incident is what we see normally under the open incidents so you can see all the active incidents active equal to true incidents are shown here so to see more details of the different fields that you require to see this is something that can be customized or personalized for your own view through the personalized list you can click on personalized list and decide to show many details now you can already understand that i created a ticket here and we are not able to see that ticket on top of the list so it is something that you can easily find on the basis of probably something that is updated most recently. So as and when I clicked on updated, it helped me sort the list of active or open incidents on the basis of the recent incident. So you can see the incident that we created already showing up here. 
these are some details that again can be modified from the very view here what is called the list view of incidents so you can even double click on the very field and as well decide on changing the information so now that we know on how to register the incidents let's try generalizing and understanding a way on which how normally the service desk personnel or the person who is working on the incident would be looking at the incident so a normal person who has incident assigned to him would basically go and click the assigned to me link on the left or the module called assigned to me so this will basically give the corresponding person who is currently logged in as the assigned to let's assume we have the person right now who is assigned to as beth anglin the person so for that let's do another way of looking at it let me impersonate as beth anglin so when i search for beth anglin it would go into the view of how Beth Anglin will be seeing the ServiceNow application. So as and when Beth Anglin types incident, he or she would be able to go into the module under incident and click on assign to me to see all the various incidents assigned to that person. As you can see here, the incident that we created has already got assigned to Beth Anglin. Now, Beth Anglin can see, oh, this was an incident that was created 13 minutes before. So let's assume that Beth Anglin has already diagnosed the incident and has found that this particular incident has a particular resolution. So the fulfillment user or what we call the assigned to person, as in this case, Beth Anglin would go about clicking on um, putting the state to resolved or he or she can go and click on the resolve button to basically resolve this incident. So in order to resolve the incident, let's try clicking on the button. So you can see already that the person who is resolving the incident needs to give the notes of closure that will help to understand how this incident was resolved. So this automatically highlights with a star the details that require to close this incident. So let's assume this incident was solved as a workaround. Let's assume that the client was reinstalled. So you give as many information like this and click on resolve the incident results. Now it goes into resolved state as you can see. So ServiceNow functionality normally helps out of the box that the incidents that are resolved will automatically move to closed in a period of six days. Now, how to configure it and more details on administration of various modules like incident problem is something that comes in the purview of a system administration course. But what we can understand right now here is the incident management process and how it is easily driven inside ServiceNow and how easily any kind of a role or any kind of a personnel involved in the process can get involved and look at very required details that helps in closing the issue. Now let's go through some of the other modules which are shown in incident. The open link helps in showing the active incidents. So all active you can understand all open incidents means having the value active equal to true. So let's try and see the value which could be active is called false. So these are incidents that are closed. So the value of active in incident management is something that is driven automatically through the basis of the state closed. This is again involved with some server side objects that drive the value automatically and is something that you can learn in system administration of service now. So the open and unassigned link that comes out of the box and in incident management module are list of incidents that doesn't have the assigned to value. As you can see, the assigned to value is shown as empty. Now, these are lists that you can customize again, and that is one of the biggest features of ServiceNow in terms of user experience, being able to change the filters for example, if I add another condition to ensure that I want to see only incidents which were opened today. So you can change the date accordingly or you can change in terms of the timeline that they have given. So let's assume we have our incidents which are created or opened today, which is assigned to none. There is no incident assigned to none. So now let's say you want to remove one of the filter conditions out of this. It's as well very simple as just clicking on the greater than sign. So you can see today we created this incident and it shows up as one of the active incidents, which obviously is in resolved, which means there is no action that needs to be taken care by the assignee personnel. And as a service desk manager, 
he or she would be more interested in looking at the open unassigned list of incident or open incidents. So now there is an overview sort of dashboard which helps the incident management understand what is the current state of affairs on incidents. So you can see here that the critical open incident there are numbered 15. There are six unassigned incident. There is 12 overdue incident and there are open incidents that is older than 30 days and all of this helps in driving the incident management process better by the involvement of roles like incident manager. So reporting dashboards and graphs are something that is very easily available and customized in accordance to the need of the user. So another functionality that I just touched upon but didn't show was a critical incident map. So you can see as and when I open the critical incident map that the module shows a map with where the various critical incidents exist. For example, if I keep my mouse on top where it shows the exclamation mark, you can see that particular incident exists in that particular location, which you can obviously drill down to the detail of where the location information has been given. Now this location information is picked from the user's location information which I showed you right so this you can see is an incident that comes reported by the user named Taylor Vreeland and Taylor Vreeland is situated in the location of Camino del Plaza San Isidro in California so that's about the incident management module and the various modules or parts of the incident management I hope you enjoyed listening to this video Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!